got chat. So. Uh, okay, we're actively recording and ready to go. It looks like we have so three, it, three minutes. It looks like it's not quite five, so yeah. wait till five. Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> it worked. Okay. And the, uh, the, the person joining us here to my, my right uh, is the actual homeowner. Uh, she just allows me to live here um, after, what, 50 years? 40 years. Okay. Who's counting? Um, so she'll be back momentarily, but that's my wife, Carol. And then with Steve, I think we've got everyone, at least that we were going to have on our end of things. And this is a public hearing item, so I will monitor for um, attendees with their hands raised, but it doesn't look like we have any at other attendees right now. And Steve's going to do the talking. Unless he says something you don't want. Uh -huh. It's all right. It's not going to say anything. Mute us. Okay. We are at five o'clock. Okay. Should we get started? Welcome to the Salt Lake City Planning Division Appeals Hearing Meeting. My name is Mary Woodhead. I am the hearing officer tonight. We have one matter on the agenda, a variance request at approximately 2373 East 1300 South. This is a public meeting, so we will have time during the course of the hearing to allow anyone from the public to make comments on this matter. Um, I would ask that everyone mute their phones during the hearing um, so we won't have any of those funny phone interruptions. I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm going to try very hard not to cough during the hearing. How I would like to proceed on this is hear from the city staff first with an overview of the petition and the city's position. And then we will hear from the applicant with any additional information or arguments they'd like to make. At that point, I will open the hearing for public comment if there is any. And um, finally, we will bring it back to the applicant to make any further and final comments. Um, unless anyone has the objection, we'll go ahead and start and hear from Salt Lake City. Hello, thank you, Mary, for your time. Hello, Mr. Lear and Mr. Cornell. Um, this is a determination issue, whether the applicant meets the standards for a variance in ordinance 21A 24.050.E.1 to build an addition in the front setback. The front setback for this property is based on the average block face of the, the other properties on the block face. Um, the subject property of the subject, subject practice, property, they are asking for a reduced setback of 40 to 44 feet, six inches from the required uh, 98 feet. And uh, Mary, I know that you'd like to be very <laughs> brief, so I'll just summarize um, the key considerations and discussion that the 
the planning staff had in looking at this, this application. Um, there's four things that came to, to the, that were very critical for the consideration of it. Um, as we all know that the variance is based on something that ha that gives uh, the is something related to the property or does not give the property owner the same privileges as other people in the the area. So the first consideration that we looked at was the impact to the properties around and directly across the street to the south is a cemetery. We felt that that was not an impact at all. Um, and to the two dwellings on the side, this would be on the, the addition would be put on the west side of the property and the neighbor to the west would still be way over 23 feet from their property and beyond because the, the house to the west sits very far back from 13th East. Um, so the, imp the negative impact was, is not there. Um, that was our first consideration. The second one is that the front yard setback for this property does limit the applicant on where the um, the front yard setback is, and and it's very unique and and very uh, a special situation to this property. Um, like I've noted in the staff report, other neighborhoods, low density neighborhoods in the city, do not have this kind of setback. The block face average. Um, kind of limits a lot because you've got varying um, setbacks already. You've got two properties that are less than 30 feet from 13th East at this point, and then you've got two beyond 200. So the block face average is is very is very hard, um, in in particular on this property owner to meet that. The third thing is the topography of the of the property. The property does slope substantially to the north, just directly after the rear of the of the house. Um, they do have other buildings in the backyard, and so it the placement of an addition just isn't there. Um, and as I said, the topography bringing it down to the to the north um, makes it impossible not to be able to um, want to build within. The front yard or to the side. The last consideration that we looked at was the orientation of the of the existing building where it was built on the property. It is a little bit skewed, slanted, if you will. Um, the excuse me, the most front east part definitely sticks um, many feet. Oh, excuse me, and then I cough. Many feet in front of the west side, and that causes a conflict in where the front yard line is. And then again, with that block face average, it, it makes it hard for an addition to be put on without being in the front yard setback. So those four considerations brought us to the recommendation that based on the analysis and finding in my staff report, in our staff report, that the planning staff is of the opinion that the application meets the standards for approval of the variance request and therefore recommends that the appeals hearing officer approve the proposed variance request based on the findings in the staff report. Thank you, I appreciate Sorry, it. Sorry, that was a little long. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I usually at the beginning of these hearings mentioned that I've read all the materials <laughs> and I have, but I always appreciate it. I did have one question um, and it's about the substantial property right of the covered entrance. Um, I did wonder, does the city take the position that that's sort of the case for all homeowners? Um, that's, that's the one place where I wondered about the analysis. We, we talked about that, um, definitely. And that's a hard question to go with all of the city, because this is very, this is a unique situation. This is a larger lot property. I did look at all of the houses on the block front face and they do all have coverage of their their main dwelling door and i think that was a big consideration for that substantial property right of those people within that block face okay um, again you know other other neighborhoods within the subdivision or excuse me within the city aren't going to be like that but we were looking at immediate houses okay okay 
I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and hear from the applicant. I'm not sure who's speaking, but um, go ahead. And the other thing, I haven't done one of these for a while, is that there really isn't a time limit. Like I said, I've read all the materials, but I want you to use the time to say what you think you need to say. I'm not going to cut you off after two minutes or three minutes. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, let me just say two things in advance. This is John Lear. One, uh, Steve and I did not coordinate hats. I had no idea he was going to be wearing these. They're different colors, so it's it's fine. <laughs> so anyway, it's not a uniform. Um, the second part of it is I wanted to thank the staff because in reading the analysis, I thought it covered most of the issues that we feel are salient. Steve is going to point out a couple of, uh, of more. So I'm going to, at this point, turn it over to Steve um, to uh, make some additional comments relative to the staff report, but we felt the staff report was quite comprehensive. Steve? Yeah, thanks, John. Um, can I share my screen? I'm not sure. I, I it's the button is disabled. I'm not sure yeah, if let nice me to... give you permissions. Thank you. Okay. Can you all see that? Okay, so we just we just have a quick presentation we want to walk through. And again, you know, the report was really comprehensive. So I struggled to to figure out what are we going what are we going to add to this presentation um, that's going to provide additional information. But what what we really wanted to do was just give you a sense of, you know, what the house is today. Um, and it's, you know, this is it. Um, as of last year, we took this picture last year um, and what we're proposing to do with the house, which is sometimes um, somewhat difficult to imagine if you're not looking, if you're just looking at a set of um, floor plans or um, standard elevation drawings. But this is really what we're what we're trying to achieve with this addition. So you can see the addition to the south, the, the gazebo structure and then the covered porch, um, which um, extends out from the from the face of the house. Um, about eight feet. Um, and just, you know, we're, we're sort of reiterating some of the points that Diana's made, but you know, that these are unique considerations of this application, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, when it was built, it was under a different zoning requirement. Um, the roadway was realigned in the thirties after the house was constructed. And therefore the house is now closer to this setback than it otherwise would have been. And the house really is, is placed on the site in the only place it can sit on that site due to the sloping topography as you as you move to the north. So, you know, we we appreciate this chance to um, come before you and and to state our case and to and to have a chat with you. But that's that's really all we have to add to this application. I want to thank Diana for um, the work she's put into this. We've uh, we're very appreciative of of her dedication. So thank you. Thank you. Um, can you, uh, the presentation that you just did, can you make a copy of that and forward it to city staff? So it's part of the formal record in the case. I can. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I guess my question to you is the same question I had for Diana and it's about. About the part of the, the requirements, the elements for a variant that says it's the it affects a substantial property right and whether that right to that covered porch fits the criteria or the definition of that. And I'm interested in your perspective on that. Well, yeah, I'm going to maybe come at it from a different perspective and not, not so much as a, from a legal and zoning perspective, but as a, a building type perspective, because, you know, a, a porch is really something that belongs on a house. Um, you know, this house is sort of lacking this, this front piece that it really desires to have. And so architecturally speaking, yes, that's a right that, that the property owners have is to, you know, inhabit and occupy the front of their house in, in such a way that, um, you know, gives them 
view onto the street, gives them access to the street from their from their front property. So that that's maybe coming at it a bit differently, but um, I don't want to just you know parrot what Diana is saying because I agree with her as well. But so would you say that that's a right that every house in Salt Lake City has? I don't know if I would go to that extent. You know that that's hard to always say. Like it, it applies to everything. I think it's a it's a right that that people have to enjoy their property and to you know to occupy it the way that they the way that they see fit. That's within the law, of course. Um, you know we're we're asking for a variance to that to that uh, uh, ordinance, but you know we we feel that this is still something that is um, you know is is something that can be enjoyed by the by the residents of of the house. So. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think we've heard from the city and the applicant, so I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak to this? We have no other attendees. Okay, we have no other attendees. Then I will bring it back, first of all, to Salt Lake City and then to the applicant to see if you have any final um, thoughts to add. In the city, no, I think we've stated it in our in our staff report that we do feel comfortable that this meets the standards for the variance, um, and we are recommending approval. Thank okay, you. thank you. And from the applicant, do you have anything else to add? I'm sorry, I I'd comment on your last question about right. Um, as lawyers, we know, and there's two here. Um, they're often situational, like crying fire in a crowded theater. Um, this is a unique circumstance. We've lived here for uh, close to 40 years. Um, this has never been an issue until we really were trying to make a statement about the house. It's a unique property. Uh, when these houses were built, they were the only, other than one other, the only houses up on this bench level. So this is all before the development of the East Bench. And they were built in a context where there was much more property out front than as they noted the alignment of the road. Um, in, in this instance, I'd only reiterate that uh, we think it's a right that's appropriate in this circumstance due to the size of the lot, due to the fact that it does not impede uh, uh, on the uh, on the neighbors. Uh, the topography forces us to kind of have to go forward rather than to go back in terms of uh, we think uh, 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 expanding the livability of the house. Right now, we enter almost exclusively and exit almost exclusively out of our east door because going out the front is not really a pleasant experience and it doesn't have that sense. And so as much of this or our desire in developing this plan was aesthetic as it was um, a, a, a anything else, Though it will increase the livability of the house, it will allow us to move forward and enjoy at different times of the year the front of the house, as opposed to being almost exclusively restricted to being in the back of the house. And and so in, in that sense, whether that rises to the level of right, I'm not sure. But in this context, we believe it's appropriate and ought to be. Uh, a, a quote a right uh, as it relates to this particular circumstances of this uh, property. Carol, do you have anything else you would like to no, add? Thank you for your time. I appreciate the staff who was super willing to listen, and that's very much appreciated. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful house. It reminds me of New England where I grew up. Oh, so. Thank you. Well, and, and it is intended to, and we're embellishing yes. it now. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I am going to go ahead then and close this hearing unless someone has any last thoughts. Um, I will take this under advisement and issue a written decision in the next week. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate your time. Thank you. I, and okay. staff, thank you so much, uh, Diana and the others that I have not met, and Steve, as you as well. Thanks. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.